But joining us here in studio for the rest of this hour and 20 minutes into the next hour uh, is David Icke. And uh, you would have thought that uh, the King of England uh, had arrived, you know, to visit with the people. In fact, they were a lot more excited than that when David showed up. I've got to be honest. When I showed up, I was mobbed. I think they have a, uh, a word for it in rugby. What do they call it? A scrum. A scrum. Well, this... When, when David arrived, it was a super scrum. Uh, and uh, I tell you, man, it is great to, it is great to uh, be here with you. It is great to uh, meet you in person. And thank you for spending time with us. Uh, what, no problem. what is going on in the world? Nice to meet you after all this time in you a bet, hotel David. room in Watford. Who would have thought it? Absolutely. What's going on in the world, Alex? Um, I think we're at a, 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 a very special time because, you know, when I started out 20 years ago, 20, more than 20 years ago, uh, it was a lonely road. I mean, anyone who's been in this road a long time knows that there weren't many uh, interested people that long ago. Uh, do you want me to move around? Scoot it just a little bit, yeah. Okay. Sure. And, uh, and now, suddenly, this, this cusp moment where we're, we're getting towards a critical mass of people where the waters are starting to break. And I think two things are happening. First of all, um, the endless toil and effort, uh, apparently uh, against all the odds, banging your head against a wall, year after year, decade after decade, eventually we've seen a, a point now where the wall is starting uh, to show cracks in it. We're starting to get this information in, out to enough people so that they can uh, see that the world is very much different to what they thought it was. But there's something else happening, which I think is, um, is just as important in a way and, and, and interacts with, with, with that. And that is that this agenda has now reached the point where it's not in the shadows anymore in terms of the way it's playing out. It's still in the shadows in, in, in the, 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 the deep inner sanctum that's orchestrating it. But in the way it's playing out, in the banking crash, in, in austerity, where there's been this fantastic transfer of wealth uh, from the people through governments to uh, banks and, and the elite. And, and after Cyprus now, they've started to actually take the government out of that equation and go straight into people's bank accounts. All these things are coming together to get people to look at the world in a different way. People are seeing the world and they're thinking, what's happening? I don't like what's going on. This is happening. That's happening. What's going on? Fortunately, after all these years of effort, there is now a massive alternative media that actually has the ability, which is what's going on, to say to people in that state, this is why it's happening. And it's making sense to people. It's making sense of the world to people that the normal uh, mainstream explanations of everything are not making. And this combination of people's life experience and the uh, information explaining the world in a different way, this is coming together in, in a way that um, is, is really starting to, 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 to break the waters and this weekend is so symbolic for me you know we've all been chasing and trying to expose the Bilderberg group for a, a very long time decades when people said it didn't exist and it didn't matter it, 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 even if it did uh, and the mainstream media didn't touch it they wouldn't you never saw it mentioned these people were meeting in different parts of the world and, and the mainstream media wasn't mentioning it and now in Britain in 2013, we have seen the biggest mainstream exposure of Bilderberg in history. And we're not finished yet. There's two days to go. And the genie is out of the bottle. And it ain't going back. Because once you start to realize, and it's new to you, that actually these people who are making decisions about where the direction of, of everybody's lives on the planet are going, and they're meeting in secret with the corporations and the banks and, and, and the, uh, the inner sanctum of the, uh, of the elite uh, in a hotel in secret, and we're not allowed to know what they're, officially what they're discussing and all the rest of it. This has been a bloody revelation to people who are new to this, um, and it's happened because this has got into the mainstream for the first time. It's and a it's great the discovery, weekend. It's the discovery of the shadow government. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, what we've been talking about all these years, that actually, if you uh, go high enough, there's only one oil company, there's only one biotech company, there's only one big pharma company. In the end, there's only one uh, political party in terms of major political parties in every country. That's kind of been, oh, yeah, well, well, yeah, know, that's over the top. That's, that's exaggeration. But here we have in Watford, on the outskirts of London, the proof of that in the sense of these different elements, which in any so-called democratic society should be kept apart from everybody. And if there are discussions going on and, and what have you, they should be in public. Now it's in the open and in the mainstream media, not the big picture of why it's happening, but the fact that it is happening. And this is opening so many people's eyes to the fact that this hidden hand is not a myth, it's the truth. It's a great weekend, it's a pivotal weekend, and it's a weekend we'll look back at and say, yeah, you can put your finger on that. That was the time that the change and the transformation became obvious. Again, David Icke is our guest in studio here in our hotel room, our makeshift studio uh, in Watford, England. And I've got a bunch of questions for David. We're going to break here in a few minutes. We can get started with these now. Uh, but I wanted you to repeat what you said when you first got there and gave kind of an impromptu speech uh, whenever I made the point that they want us poor. I mean, they write documents, they say that, but but still the general public, I don't think, gets why they want us poor. So, David, we got about two minutes to break. Uh, describe why they want us poor. Well, um, if anyone's seen the movie The Hunger Games, uh, where you had uh, a tiny elite in what they call the capital uh, in high-tech, uh, mega luxury, and the rest of the population in the country was in mega poverty. Um, what they want, you know, the, you, people talk all the time, and so they should, about the attack on the middle class in America. Um, when well, this attack on what we call the middle class is slightly uh, a different uh, meaning, but in this country too. Um, and the reason that that's being targeted is because if you have a, a middle class as, as was, you have um, a, uh, a graph which goes from poor up to rich. If you look at the graph now, I saw one um, the Skip other day. Skip this network break. We're skipping the break. Go. I saw one the other day on an, uh, you know, an official mainstream website in America, and it went like this. Poor, middle class, hardly much movement, and then straight up. And the straight up was 1%, and it was so big that they had to put the top of that uh, pyramid next to it to get it on the page. And we're, we're already getting there. And so this is the society they want. And for me, when you're researching something, knowing what the end is and knowing the means of manipulation to get there are absolutely crucial to understanding the game. And what they want is a mega, mega rich. I mean, it's become known as the 1%. It's probably much less than that if you get the mega, mega rich. Right, right up there, right, uh, you know, mountain high. And then a mega poor population that's basically in the same boat. And this is why I say to people, and, and, and just very quickly, this is why the Cyprus thing was set as a precedent to go directly, not through governments, to go directly into the bank accounts well, you of people. You walk through the bailouts, explain how they do it. First, it's too big to fail, they sign you onto that, then explain it. Well, what they did in 2008 was they crashed the, the economic system on purpose, problem, reaction, solution. They then started this incredible transfer of wealth for the reasons I'm just talking about, from um, the people to the banks and the elite via governments. What they did in doing that was transfer the problem from a banking crisis into a government debt crisis. This was then passed on from the governments to the people. It became now a people crisis on the basis of um, uh, the austerity programs all over the world. Well, no, no, we bailed out the banks, so we haven't got the money for all these services, so austerity. So there's a massive transfer of wealth from the people to the elite, uh, with the people suffering and, and no one else. 
Then you uh, moved to Cyprus to the next stage of this, when instead of going uh, uh, stealing the wealth of the people via governments to the elite and the banking system, they went direct into the banks, uh, bank accounts of the people. A lot of them who were very, uh, very rich um, in Cyprus bank accounts, who are a lot less richer now, direct to their accounts. And what this is doing is setting the precedent to do it all over the world because when there's another banking crisis and, and there's so many planned for these this very reason this was a little bitty uh, baby uh, beta test what it was alex especially in europe and in, in the the european union it was setting the precedent precedent is a powerful powerful uh, thing to set because when the next banking crisis comes uh, and and there's a, a problem and they've got to bail out the bank and uh, all the rest of it they're now going to say, well, hold on a second, governments are going to say this, and the European Union's going to say this. We can't justify bailing out the banks. Well, what about the people in Cyprus? We can't just let people go to straight to their bank accounts and not do it here. And that's the idea. And so I'll say to this to people around the world who at the moment think they're well off and at the moment think that this does not affect them and it's not your problem, if you are not a member of this elite of the elites, if you are not a member of this upper echelon of this 1%, then they want your money too. And they're coming for it. And this precedent set in Cyprus is a massive step towards that. They want you as poor as the people you think, well, they're poor, they're not my problem. The idea is to make it your problem. And therefore, we have to come together and put down the fault lines of, of, of income bracket and so-called class. We're in this together because they want us all mega poor, not just the currently mega poor. That's right. It is a total tool of political control, and they write books about it. Uh, whether it's Henry Kissinger and his Memorandum 200, or whether it's the science czar, John P. Aldrin, or Agenda 21, they say they want a post-industrial world where they're in these government and corporate and university reservations, they're above the law, they get the life extension technology, they get it all, and, and that's only the next phase. In fact, where did that newspaper go that I had? Uh, here it is, right here, David. This is what I wanna to talk to you about next, and we'll get back into Bilderberg, we'll get back into, is this really the beginning of the fall of Bilderberg? Uh, I also see a key line we may be passing where, okay, we have the awakening, but if people don't do something, then it just kind of yeah. uh, sets a precedent that, okay, we accept that. Yeah. So so I, I, I want to discuss that uh, with you. I've got a bunch of points I want to go over, but the London Independent, and you look at the cover of it today, half of Britons alive in 2020 will get cancer. And they're now saying in the next few years, half of Americans will have diabetes. And in the rats and all the studies and all of it, we know what the vaccines, we know what the GMO, we know what the uh, sodium fluoride, we know what it's doing. And then the globalists write books from Bertrand Russell to John P. Holdren currently. Uh, they get caught uh, all over the world giving little kids SV40, uh, SV40 cancer virus. They know what they're doing, and they're just getting us all used to everybody's got cancer, everybody's got Parkinson's early, everybody's got neurological disorders, everybody's got diseases, everybody's got problems. And then, don't worry, we've got treatments for the disease you've now got, and, and let's, you know, never mind that breast cancer is up 3,000% or children's cancer is up over 10,000% or, and again, America and England lead the world because we're run by these eugenicists. Hitler was their man. He just went a little bit early and only after specific groups. They're going after the whole world in a scientific program. And it just hits me that of course, I'm not worried about them killing me or I'm not worried about being shut down. I'm not worried about being sued or any of this because I've read their own words. I know how diabolical it is. I know I'm living in the equivalent of a science fiction nightmare. They want the whole world and our numbers reduced by at least 80 percent. They're on record. They're on record doing secret experiments against us all over the world. 
We know the people running our countries are the most wicked people on the earth. We know they're funding al-Qaeda and using them on uh, innocent countries like Libya and Syria. We know they're spying on us without warrants. We now know they're criminal. What we've all said, unfortunately, is all being confirmed. And it's bizarre now to have people really listening to us because you know now there's that much more of a responsibility. But what about the, uh, the fact that this attack is so over the top, David Icke, that that's what they almost have over on us is that it's so diabolical, so crazy, so evil that, yeah, people can finally get their spying on you without warrants. They can finally get that they're taking poor people's tax money and giving it to offshore billionaires that control trillions who want their money to be worth more by bankrupting you so they can buy it for pennies on the dollar. They're replacing humans with robots at Foxcom factories and saying, good, go jump off the roof. I mean, we are already in the middle of just insane same times, how much more crazy will it get? And how does this cancer situation tie into it all? Will people sit there and watch their families die, David Icke, and not care about the globalists doing it to them? I've said for so many years, one of the greatest ways of suppressing a population is to suppress their sense of the possible. If you could suppress their sense of what is uh, possible by hiding technology, by hiding the, the agenda, by hiding the cause of all these things you're talking about, then people will sit there um, like 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 a, a frog sitting in a boiling water, and they will get boiled because they can't see the possibility that actually they might get boiled, or or even that they're in the pro the process of being so. And so, it, the biggest um, and this is the mainstream media. The mainstream media's uh, range of what is possible is so minute, and this then is transferred by people getting most of their information through the mainstream media to the population. What are, is so brilliant about this Bilderberg weekend, as it's turned out, is Bilderberg is a, it's a part of the web, and it's part of the agenda that people can, can use to enter the web in terms of understanding it because it's at a level that they can deal with. It's politicians and corporations, uh, chiefs and, and what have you. Illegal lobbying. Yeah, uh, meeting together in secret and it's like, what's going on? But the Bilderberg Group is, is merely a strand in the web and it's well uh, out from the center, the spider. And if you go back from the Bilderberg group towards the spider, the closer you get, the more evil, the more uh, satanic, uh, the more secretive and exclusive these strands in, in the web become. You go that way from the Bilderberg group into mainstream society, and you're going into governments and departments and corporations where the same agreed agenda We're plays break. out. Absolutely, extremely powerful with David Icke. I want to come back and talk about what is at the core of the spider and how you said that Savelle at the BBC was basically a pedophile years ago. You laid all this out, and I would hear this 17 years ago, and I'd go, he says a lot of good stuff, but I can't buy this. And then it all just keeps coming true, coming true, coming true. How did you know all this? I guess you worked there. We're going to talk to David Icke and more straight ahead. He'll be with you in the next hour for some. We'll take your phone calls and you'll meet his son. Stay with us. As we saw in Katrina and as we are watching now in New York and New Jersey, the federal government can't and won't help you in a crisis. FEMA ran out of water and MREs in days. Electricity is still off to over 1 million people. The Red Cross, who is quick to beg for money, is now slow to react. Don't put it off any longer. Get prepared today. While you're on InfoWarsShop.com, check out these other great preparedness items. The Aquapod Kit lets you store up to 65 gallons of water in your bathtub. The Pocket Socket provides you with manual electricity for small electronics like your cell phone. The Life Straw is great for your bug out bag. And check out our complete line of Interfood products for great tasting and nutritionally dense foods that have a great shelf life. If you are looking to secure your home in a crisis, you can order Strategic Relocations, the film, a great companion to the book Strategic Relocations, third edition, and The Secure Home by Joel Skousen. 
When the time to perform arrives, the time to prepare has already passed. Get prepared now, so if a crisis strikes your home, you and your family will be secure. Go to InfoWarsShop.com. When I was talking to David about this anti-human agenda and why are every major institution in the world whether it's Russia or China or England or the U.S., Catholic Church or uh, the BBC, or why is it pedophiles and necrophiliacs and devil worshipers? I mean, I never get sick of my wife. I never get sick of a glass of red wine. I never get sick of enchiladas. I never get sick of a sunrise or sunset. I never get tired of just green grass, good stuff, uh, you know, paddling in a kayak down the river. I do not get how they're so into this, and that's why they win. What you were talking about is that they've shrunk the possible, so we're so naive. David I, you can say what you want about him. That's when I realized about 15 years ago, this guy is nothing but positive. He expands your window and forces you with things that sound so radical, whether he's completely right or not. None of us are perfect. We see through rose-colored glasses. David I forces you to expand the window of perception of the possible. Because I would hear him talk about the BBC's full of pedophiles and they, they and they have sex with dead bodies and they drink blood. And Al Gore drinks blood. And then I actually found the article where he falls around with bags of blood in case he's injured. And then I found out more about him. These people are just given over. They are psychopaths with air forces. They are they are devil worshipers with nuclear weapons. And and look at history. We know all the ancient emperors in Rome and the Aztecs were all crazy nuts. So of course, these are 21st century versions of that. So get into that and, and, and the cancer rates exploding and what they're doing and what their master plan is. And then more in Bilderberg, what this means that we forced it out in the open and that crossroads we're at, David Icke. Well, all these things come together in the end. I mean, the more you research and the more you understand, the more every dot connects. And what I was saying a few minutes ago about the greatest uh, or one of the greatest um, defenses that this conspiracy has is suppressing the sense of the possible and the media are constantly doing that. Um, and yes, this is a great weekend, fantastic. And I hope as many people come here as can get here tomorrow as, as possible. Um, and it's a way of entering the web in a way that people c can understand and appreciate within their view of the world um, within within the blinkers that we're, you know, manipulated to wear all our lives. But I say this to you, this is a way of entering the web, and it's a very significant strand in the web. But to understand the Bilderberg Group's part in all this and to understand the web itself, all preconceived ideas since the day you were born, all belief systems, all senses of the impossible, just have to be allowed to fall. And that let information uh, be your guide, not preconceived idea, belief, which senses where you will go and what you will consider to be possible. Because the Bilderberg Group is a strand within a satanic conspiracy that is so deep so evil, so completely beyond uh, what we would perceive as any form of humanity or heart or compassion or any of it, empathy, that you, we really do have to open our minds to let in the truth of what we're facing. And that's not to be frightened, that's not to be scared of it. it this evil only prospers because it has put us in a tiny box of perception, understanding, and ignorance of the world we live in and the reality we're experiencing. If it was all powerful, it would not have to do that. And if we open our minds, open our hearts, and, and let our minds expand where they want to go rather than holding them in a position that we're programmed to, 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 to hold them, then together, this is a house of cards that we're looking at. This, this, this all-powerful evil. No, 
It's a house of cards, and it's absolutely dependent for its survival on humanity en masse staying asleep. So it's not something to fear, it is something to face. And so anyone that's coming in now and seeing this, Bilderberg, oh my goodness, what they meet in secret, oh, I didn't know that was going on. Well, strap in, because that's the start of the journey through the web. Because, you know, what Alex was talking about is, is what is actually unfolding in front of our eyes. There is a mass uh, operation, not coming, not somewhere over the rainbow, sometime never, that is happening in our lives now, which is to create a massive, massive uh, cull of the population. And this is not something where large numbers of people suddenly just keel over uh, because people are go, hey, what's happening? This is a cum cumulative destroying of the human uh, immune system and an, a, a war on the human body and the human mind. And it's being done because of the web, the spider at the center of the web, therefore controls the policy of corporations, biotech corporations like Monsanto that are producing the GM foods which are genetically modifying us. The same spider is controlling the pharmaceutical industry which is destroying the immune system and, and uh, uh, war with the body through pharmaceutical drugs and vaccines. Um, and it, the same spider is um, controlling the uh, network of mega parasites that we call the banking system. That same spider is dictating through the web to governments to introduce the agenda that the spider is dictating. This is a major part of what Bilderberg does in this interface between the hidden and the world that we see. So it's time not just to recognize what the Bilderberg group is, but what a great moment that people are now seeing it in such numbers, but to make that the first step, because this uh, uh, spider's web, this, this uh, rabbit hole, whatever analogy you want, is so uh, deep, and we need to face it so we can sort it out, and therefore all impossibles must be off if we're going to understand what's really happening. Absolutely. I meant to do this today and I forgot to tell the crew if they can search engine this Charlie Skelton article that was linked up on Infowars.com. But if they just search Bilderberg 2013, friendly policeman, a press zone and the one show, if they'll just search one of Charlie Skelton's or just go to Charlie Skelton's articles on The Guardian and go to Bilderberg 2013, friendly policeman, a press zone and the one show. And myself and Leanne McAdoo were over there taking photos while the crew was doing video interviews as the globalists drove in yesterday. And we both missed the shot, but I saw it with my eye. And, and I missed that. And then I looked over and another came by because it's hard when they're driving by fast to catch it. The one spot you can get a shot. They were all driving by because I saw this three times. And thank God somebody caught it. They caught it on multiple cars. They would drive by with daily mails because the first time I saw it, I said, that's just got to be a coincidence. A second time, a third time. Now, maybe the uh, Mercedes cab company said, here, cover your face with this. But it's the image uh, of them covering their faces. They don't have tinted windows with a, a tabloid magazine, a, a newspaper. They would drive by with, with newspapers over their faces, and there's a photo of this. Again, Bilderberg 2013, friendly policeman. Just search engine that, folks. Click news, and you'll get it. Bilderberg 2013, friendly policeman. Did the uh, office, uh, were you guys able to find that yet? Okay, they're showing it right now on screen, David. Look at this. Now, because, now, again, I wasn't up there even much of the time. A bunch of them came in at once, so I, I, I was sitting there. And I saw it once. I said, did we get that? No, no, it's blurred. Oh, this is the guy got it. Okay, did, did we get that? Yeah, finally, they went three times. Three cars went by with the Daily Mail tabloid up with the words, child porn teacher allowed back in classroom. Why would they drive by with a tabloid saying child porn when you've been exposing Savelle and the royal family and all this? What is really going on here, David Ike? Well, it's funny because uh, I noticed that this morning just before I, I left home to come up here. I saw one of those pictures and I thought, well, what an appropriate bloody headline to cover your face with.
Um, you know, we chatted about There's this. There's a lot of irony. Yeah. We've chatted about this in America, uh, when you've been in America a few times. One of the things that we, um, can you hear me all right? Yeah, just scoot into it. One of the uh, things that um, I'm talking about when I say we, we have to expand our sense of the possible is that this web, um, in the end, is being orchestrated from beyond human sight by a force that is anything but human. And the rituals, uh, the satanic rituals to the gods that these people are so into and constantly into, um, the gods are these, uh, these entities that are operating outside human sight, which are orchestrating this agenda. Now, I know people are... But why drive through covering your face saying child porn? Well, I mean, it, it, in many ways, it's, it's, it's just literally putting... He, he's putting it over his face, but he's putting it in ours, isn't he? Um, and, but the thing is that the reason they're so into Satanism and so into pedophilia is because these entities feed off human energy. Satanists kill because they believe they're getting power. They're, they're feeding off human energy. They're feeding off fear. This is why they've created a structure in human society that is a global factory of fear and anxiety. And but, death. Yeah, death. They feed off death. That's part torture. of That's part of the, all of it. That's, We're the good guys. We torture and bomb for peace. And, and this is the point about pedophilia. I've been researching this a very, very long time because I've just gone where the music took me or the information and not, not let preconceived idea block me. And I don't care what people think about me, so it's not made me keep my mouth shut through fear of being ridiculed. I'm not quite used to that, funnily enough. But I've been re researching this a long time in, in, in multiple countries. And, and, and I'll tell you this, the, the, the energy that these entities want more than anything else is a child's energy before puberty when uh, changes happen uh, which take it beyond perfection for them. It's a nectar to them. And so what's happening when the pedophile is having sex with the child? The pedophile is the conduit by the possessing entity, because all these people are bloody possessed by so these entities. So it's vampires. Yes. And, and, you know, this is why the, the whole stories of vampires, this is why the, the British royal family, like Charles, go back to Vlad the Impaler. They're intergenerational um, uh, bloodline vampires. They feed off, people think of, you know, drinking blood, and that's true, but it's energy. By the way, I heard you, like, 15 years ago, talk about that, that that's pure bull, and now it's all over the news that he lives in Transylvania and, and is basically a dracul. Yeah, they, they, but, you know, people think of, dra uh, of vampires, they, 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 they feed off blood. Uh, yes, true, that is true. But the, the major thing they feed on, and, and often blood is, is just an, an expression of that, is energy. And so they're looking for the energy of children. And this is why you find this dramatic ratio of pedophiles and Satanists in the so-called upper echelon of society compared with the general population because these particular bloodlines are systematically possessed through the rituals, this is how it's done, to become conduits in this reality for that which is controlling them from another reality. So while all these people and are having, you know, their sex with children, they are conduits for, for, for feeding these entities that energy. That's why pedophilia is everywhere. And what Jimmy Savile was doing, uh, Alex, people in, in this country, the, the stories are broken. Oh, Savile was a record-breaking pedophile. And what they've done, the, uh, the, the, the media, sometimes through pressure and fear of the consequences, but actually the authorities and the police have done is hold that position. Savile was a record-breaking pedophile. The, 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 the dike they don't want to break and they're desperately holding on to is that's part of the story, but only part. He was Renfield. He was supplying them. He was supplying politicians like Ted Heath, a man I exposed as a Satanist and child killer seven years before he died in a book. It was read to him. Be, uh, the passage was read days after uh, it, it was published in 1997, 98. And he had seven years to do something about it. And he never did anything about it. Why? Because it was true. Savile was also brought into the inner sanctum of the British royal family. And they don't just rape kids. They slit their throats. Oh, they do all. Well, that, that was a speciality of Heath, yeah. Well, stay there. We're going to go to break right now, folks. All I can tell you is, all I can tell you is from my study, they're, they're all into this. Whether it's 
demons or whatever that are running them doing it. Christians say it's demons. He says it's something else. And all it, the same thing. Yeah, all all the, the same thing. The same thing. Hi, Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources. With over 30 years of experience in the precious metals business, I can tell you without a doubt, we are facing the most dangerous and volatile times, not just in the United States, but worldwide. Peace of mind is gold and silver. Now is the time to invest in gold. When it comes to bullion coins, our prices are competitive and the closest to melt. If it's numismatics you're looking for, we have some of the best deals out there. Visit MidasResources.com today or go to Infowars.com and click on the link to see our daily specials. Here is an example of one of our long-term specials we've been offering for more than a year. Two silver dollars from the turn of the last century, plus two powerful films, The Obama Deception and The American Dream. We also add in the book Dishonest Money, all for $72 and free shipping. The most trusted name in precious metals is Midas Resources. Call 1-800-686-2237 or go to Infowars.com. I'm Ted Anderson with Midas Resources. Sources. We are now only entering the edge of a global financial superstorm, the likes of which the planet has never seen. Here in the United States, the private Federal Reserve is giving more than $85 billion of taxpayer money a month to themselves and other offshore foreign banks. And the worst part is we have to pay the bank's interest on the money we give them. There is now a race between the global central bank mafia cartels to see who can devalue their country's currencies the fastest. We are already seeing big increases in inflation at the grocery store and the gas line. This will eventually lead to hyperinflation. More than a dozen top globalists like George Soros have been buying record amounts of gold while at the same time bad-mouthing it to the public. Don't just listen to what they say. Watch what they do. For more than 6,000 years of recorded human history, gold has been the ultimate hedge against uncertain times and inflation. Before investing in metals, it is important to do your own research and find a reputable company. Midas Resources has the highest Better Business Bureau rating of an A+. Unfortunately, very few precious metal companies can boast that. Midas Resources has assembled one of the most educated, researched, and professional teams of brokers in the industry. The evidence is overwhelming. In uncertain times, gold and silver is safe harbor. Now is the time to invest in gold. Call 800-686-2237 and Midas Resources will make you 10 reasons to own gold absolutely free. No shipping. It's absolutely free. And finally, Ted Anderson wants to challenge you to find any deal that comes close to his two silver dollars at cost with free shipping, with two free films and a book for $72. That's more than $160 value for $72 shipping included. Click the link at Infowars.com to go to the MidasResources.com specials page. Brought to you by MidasResources.com and Ted Anderson the trusted name in precious metals. All right, we're going to go 30 minutes into the next hour, and David Ike's going to be here with us. We're going to have his son, who works on the site and is really an informed uh, person as well, uh, joining us uh, here on the broadcast. And I just want to be clear about this. I've had the... Biggest shows on BBC, Sky Television, you name it, call us, and they want us to come into town and you know be on their shows, and, and we may do that. But the point is, is that they would they would kill before not to admit Bilderberg even existed. And of course, we're like, here it exists. Here's their minutes. Here's declassified documents. The CIA helped set it up. Um, it was a Hitler plan to put uh, the whole of Europe under an economic dictatorship. The EU. Uh, here's the name of it. I talked to the member of the EU Parliament. We heard that in the first hour, uh, who exposed it. That's what's so frustrating is that I know the Federal Reserve is private. I've read their charter. You can read it right now. It's public. Uh, you go to the Library of Congress and read it, not just online. Uh, I know the Bilderberg Group was founded in 54, but was actually around before that. Uh, I've had National Archive documents leaked to me. WikiLeaks has got them, but a lot of it's public. And the media sits there going, you believe it exists. BBC still tried that. The other media knew the jig was up, but they know they're lying to their viewers. It's about hearing, well, it doesn't exist, but I know it exists to make you feel small. It's about keeping that idea small. So whether it's demons, whatever it is, I, I can't prove any of that. I know that you don't get into these upper echelons of the elite unless you are into devil worship hurting children. 
And I know every culture ends up being run by an elite that does that yep. when no one I know acts like that or believes like that. So regardless of what runs it, regardless, it's going on. And, and, and David, Ike, how did you discover you know, all of this, because you said you went to, I think it was Peru by some standing stones and had a vision. And, you know, I don't get into new age type stuff. I don't even believe in all that. I went to Stonehenge and walked across a line thinking, oh, this is boring and instantly felt energized. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. I mean, I've talked to you on the show before about uh, the fact that, you know, this reality is a projection from an energetic uh, uh, information blueprint, a bit like wireless internet. Um, and you believe that scientists have found now that it's a computer program, yeah. that that's the hack. Yeah, that's the hack. But the thing is that the, the, the energy that you felt, and, and see, the Earth has an energy field. We all know that. Everyone accepts that. But the, it is interpenetrated with uh, a network of lines. They're known in, in, in Britain as, as ley lines or meridian lines. These are lines of force. Now, where um, many of these lines cross... Think of it as a web. It literally is a web of energy, electromagnetic energy. So where lots of them cross... That's how birds navigate. Yeah, well, yes. This, 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 these uh, are the, uh, the electromagnetic fields. By the way, it's now been proven that, that, that we all have these cells in our brain. Yeah, these, these are the electromagnetic fields that, that they, they use to navigate. And, and so many other things happen that are called paranormal. The scientists, you know, like, you know, Stonehenge is a good one. Stonehenge is where the bloody scientists ought to be. That's where their minds are in terms of, you know, understanding reality as it really is. But the scientists kind of dismiss that. So they're going, this is a mystery. But when you understand you've got this unifying field, which unifies everything, suddenly the, the, the paranormal becomes perfectly bloody logical. But where are lots of these lines cross, a, a massive vortex of energy is created. And if you do things in that vortex, you affect the Earth's energy field in a much more powerful well, by the way, way. I thought it was a joke, had forgotten it, was on the phone and walked across a line, and they kept going back, and my whole crew felt it. Yeah, I mean, I was doing this. Have you been there? I've been, oh, loads of times. I've been doing, you know, this is something I, I researched at great length uh, years ago, and it's not new age. Some people who do it, are, you call themselves new age. <coughs> what it is, is simply understanding reality on a level that mainstream science does not understand and does not want to understand. Why? Because it's controlled by the same network and the last thing that network wants the target population to do is understand the nature of the reality it's experienced. That's right. Going to break back in 60 seconds. And by the way, I did look it up. Guess what the Grove's on? The very same ley line. Jakari Jackson here, and I want to talk to you for a second about water. You know about ProPure, our flagship water purification system, but check out some of our portable water filter products at InfoWarsStore.com. The clearly filtered water pitcher. Also, for those of you on the go, we have the Athlete Edition filtered water bottle and the RAD Eliminator Pro filtered sports bottle that removes radiation. And keep in mind, we have replacement filters for all of these products. The ever popular grab and go bag favorite, the Life Straw, the Crystal Quest shower filter system, and the Aquapod kit, great for mass storage of water. And while you're at the InfoWars shop, pick up a copy of our latest book, 31 Days to Survival. You can find all this and more at the InfoWarsStore.com. And don't forget, it's your support that funds our operation. Sign up for our free newsletter at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I feel like I really know him well, and I did over the phone talking to him for like 15 years on air. But David Icke is here in studio in Watford, England. People say Watford, some working class area. The Grove is incredibly beautiful, and it's got bizarre skeleton art all over it, and people being absorbed, losing their humanity, becoming machines. This is a short segment, David. We're going to get a bunch of world news uh, with you in the next segment, but you were starting to get into the royal family. They're constantly digging up dead bodies on their property. Diana put out a, a ledger and a video saying, Charles will kill me in a fake auto accident. He told me he would. Then you have all of that. Uh, you have all this bizarreness where only the queen can eat swans. No one else can. I mean, it's just blaringly obvious that you've got a criminal group of psychos in control, whatever they are, just getting away with bloody murder. Uh, how is it going for them? Well, it's not going for them like it was because people are becoming more and more irreverent. I mean, you know, I've, I've had a stomach condition 
um, for the last, you know, 60 years of my life, which which gets me nauseous and wanting to 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 throw up. And it's funny because every time I see the royal family uh, doing one of their public rituals, that's when I get it. You know what I mean? Um, and it's about worshiping them. Yes, they they want to be worshipped. You know, <laughs> you, you you have this thing you can't turn your back on the queen. I wish I met her. You watch me. Um, it's this irrever this this reverence they have, and we need to get irreverent with this system and and not kind of bow to it, which is what they what they want. But what I was saying earlier, Jimmy Savile, child procurer to the elite, he was procuring children for uh, Ted Heath on his yacht Morning Cloud from the. Uh, now infamous children's home on, on, on Jersey. But he was, by his own words, introduced... This is a guy who's a disc jockey. And in the end, he, he wasn't even that. But he, in his own words, he was introduced into the inner sanctum of the royal family by Lord Mountbatten in the 1960s, the mentor of Prince Philip and Prince Charles. And, uh, and he said to do favours. I can get them things. Yeah, Mountbatten... Was is a known paedophile. Um, he was involved in paedophilia at places like, like the King Cora Boys Home in Belfast and, and what have you. And 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 uh, you know, ask this question, media. Ask yourself this question: What is an aging disc jockey doing in the inner inner sanctum of the royal family? So close that by his own words, and I know this from other sources who were close, who were very close friends of Princess Diana for nine years before she died, that he was asked by them to be the go-between and the mediator between Diana and Charles when their marriage was breaking down. What's going on? And I'll tell you how I knew about Savile. This is a very, very interesting story. Um, in 1997, 98, I was asked to go in, uh, to a little meeting at the House of Lords. I'd never even been into the House of Lords. I didn't know what I was going into. And it was just a small group of people. And we just had a chat in the afternoon. But there was somebody there who wasn't from the House of Lords who was saying some very interesting things about the death of Princess Diana. It was about 98, not long after it happened. And I called her over afterwards. I said, how do you know all that? And she says, well, my, my best friend was the best friend of Diana for nine years. And they fell out about two years before Diana died. She said, I think she'll talk to you. A few weeks later, or days later, she arrives on the island where I live, and I've got all this on tape. It's still at home on tape. And she told me about... you got to hear that. Yeah, it's, about, it's on one of those old tapes. No, uh, no, it doesn't matter. No, no, yeah, yeah but yeah, but this is the point. What she told me in 1998 um, was the way that the royal family treated Diana, um, that Jimmy Savile was in on the inner... Uh, sanctum of the royal family and Princess Diana uh, called him a sleazebag and that he was a necrophiliac and, and Hold on, well, I want to repeat all this and get to the rest of it when we come back from break. This is too powerful and you're only going to hear this type of stuff because I'm the craziest man in America crazy like a fox to put the truth on the air it's all come out, the necrophilia, everything Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants, fruits, vegetables, nuts, you name it. And the globalists have been going after gardening. They've been harassing people that have gardens in their front yards or their backyards. They've called for licenses for people to have gardens because you can't trust prisoners in the police state America to be able to grow their own food. That's why I've come to the realization that we need to become self-sufficient. You need to be informed. You need to have the Second Amendment to protect yourself. You need to be politically active to wake up others. You need to filter your water. But you also need to plant a garden. Even if you live in an apartment, you can do this. If you live in the countryside, obviously you can do it on a grand scale. There are so many green belts in areas uh, that humans don't even visit uh, nearby cities and in suburbs where people are now more and more planting their own little private gardens and meadows and off the side of the road. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda, and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest of times. The ARC All-in-One Seed Kit contains 70 varieties of 50,000 seeds of fruits, vegetables, medicinal, and culinary herbs. All ARC seeds are heirloom. Each type is labeled and sealed separately for ease of use and longevity. The Deluxe Emergency Seed Bank combines three of Emergency Seed Bank's top sellers, the Family Survival Emergency Seed Bank, the Medicinal Herb Seeds Pack, and the Culinary Herb Seeds Pack. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, and medicinal herbs and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. A little seed can grow a huge tree that produces fruit for up to 50 years. We have the best life bombs. That's what these are. We have the best weapons against death out there at the lowest prices waiting for you to lovingly plant them and lovingly grow them and lovingly eat them and share them with others. We will strike back against the New World Order and this is only one more initiative in our fight against them. So please join us at InfoWarsShop.com or you can link through at InfoWars.com at the InfoWars Seed Center. We got David Icke here, uh, meeting him in person for the first time ever, in the middle of just a globalist political bloodbath. You've got the New York Times saying Obama, let me get the exact headline, can no longer lead. Uh, he is completely discredited. And again, that's supposedly the paper of record. He's just a puppet now they're trying to discard. Uh, they think he can't get any more of an agenda through for him. You've got... David Cameron, the prime minister, going to Bilderberg. I've never seen a president or prime minister during an event go to it. I guess they're like, fine, we're exposed. Bring him in publicly, because we've been there when presidents or prime ministers show up secretly, and then our inside moles tell us. I want to get back into the royal family and tell a story here, David Icke, but we predicted that they would go quasi-public. Plus, I had some sources in the U.S. Senate, also in Hollywood. But then I talked to the big BBC guy, John Sargent, their big political reporter, and he basically was admitted to you know, he was admitted into the facility. I wasn't allowed to say it completely, so he kind of halfway said, well, one of us is, and it said, I'm going to enjoy my fancy special lunch today, and he was getting all excited about it. So hard to keep all these sources straight. The point is, is that they wanted to remain secret because what they're doing is illegal, setting policy. Now it's out in the open. What does it mean to have David Cameron go there? Well, they're, they're on a massive damage limitation operation now because... Um, the the coverage the understanding of its existence and what goes on there means that although you know even people on the bbc can still go oh no all that stuff never mind you see this is what, this is where we are alex we're at a point now where great tracts of the public the awakening public are far more informed about the world and what's going on than the flipping journalists on the bbc etc you know, they're, they're still in the land of the bewildered. She was telling me it didn't exist still. Yeah, well, Does she know what a buffoon? I mean, or is she trying to put people back in the box? Well, you know, I, I think from my experience within the BBC is don't, and, and you know. You were a national TV host. Yeah, uh, and also so many other mainstream journalists is never underestimate uh, the, the level of ignorance. Um, see, what you have with journalists is this combination which always kind of hunts in packs or hunts in pairs. It's arrogance and it's ignorance. The ignorance means they don't know their backside from their elbow in terms of what's going on in the world. But the arrogance means that if it was going on, then they would know about it because they're a journalist. And often they're, of course, the last people to know about it. Jim Tucker admitted that he was arrogant and said, how dare you? There's nothing secret in politics. I'd know about that. Yeah. Well, this is, and then he set out to expose it. Yeah, but this is this is the thing. Um, when you are a journalist and you think that because you're a journalist, you, you would know about it if it was this big. This is the point. They have no conception of what's happening in the world. What they do is they report dots. I mean, this is coming back to what you said earlier. They will report in The Independent that 
there's a, a massive explosion of cancer in Britain. Here, they will report something about vaccines. Here, they will report something about um, what's going on in politics. Here, they will do something about fluoride in water. What they don't do is bring the dots together so you can see the web, you can see the tapestry. They won't do that. And Bilderberg now are in a point where it's like being caught. You know, when you're, you know, <laughs> you, you, you're, at, you're doing something you shouldn't be doing in a bedroom or something. Uh, and, and suddenly um, the door opens and suddenly you're standing up and you're brushing yourself down. Oh, no, 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 well, no nice to see you. Nothing, nothing's going on. So it, oh, look, the Prime Minister's here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now they're, they're trying to go, oh, well, yeah, but it don't, it don't matter. I mean, you know, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, we exist, yeah, but it doesn't matter. And, 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 but the public are ahead of them. This is the point. The public are not going to accept this. They won't take this rubbish anymore on the scale that they have before. Now, this is very controversial, folks, but everything he's talking about, because I'm a news hound, I know has been in the news. Everything up to the royal family, past that. But, I mean, the, you know, the, it, it, we'll just get into it. The royal family? Well, you wanted to get into... Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, we're, talking we're, we're talking about Savelle that you yeah. exposed a long time ago as a pedophile, well, which they admit was like the confidant to all the royals. Yeah, exactly. Well, the thing is... That a what, total kook, weirdo, scumbag, nobody hanging out with them constantly. What's going on? Yeah, he speaks hardly of you, mate. Um, <laughs> but um, well, he probably does now, wherever he is. Oh no! Uh, uh. But anyway, <laughs> um, the, what I was talking about. Well, uh, he just looks like a textbook pedophile. Yeah, he does, because uh, he was. Uh, but yeah, what I was saying earlier about this this lady I met in 1998, um, she told me a number of things which later proved to be absolutely true. That that was that was one of them. The rituals, the serious. You met her at Parliament. Yeah. No, no the, this was the friend of the person I met at Parliament um, who came to my to my house and and I interviewed her on tape at length. Um, she, her name was Christine Fitzgerald. She was a, a friend of Diana and acknowledged to be so by the media for about nine years. But what she told me about the rituals and what goes on at places like Balmoral Castle and, and all, was was nothing was 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 just beyond belief, but true. Now say it, tell it. Well, I mean, literally sacrificing children, drinking their blood, and all that stuff that they go on. Hey, on. I've been told by people that just went to Oxford who are famous, but I can't say their names that they did devil worship and mass orgies. Yeah, but it, it, it's the norm at that so-called level. Oh no, he's they, that's low level. Yeah, but but. The thing is, it's far more prevalent than anyone believes. That's, that's the trouble. Um, but the thing is that what she told me was that, first of all, this is 1998, that she was a, 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 an alternative healer. And da Diana used to go to her for, for healing and stuff like that um, because she, she had nobody else. She was just on her own in, that, in the middle of that Adams family, that evil Adams family we call the Windsors. Anyway, wait. That what what she called friendly people at MI5 were doing, were leaving notes for Diana, knowing that when she came, she could pick them up. And one of these notes, uh, this is why the Paul Burrell letter about, you know, Diana saying that my husband is going to kill me in a car crash, that didn't surprise me at all. I'd, I'd, I'd heard about uh, that years before in the sense of these MI5 notes, some of them were warning Diana um, that the royal family wanted her dead. Now, here's a, this... Any, the royal family wouldn't kill people. Well, just hold on a second. It was strangled twins. Well, what happened when the um, marriage of Diana and Charles broke down is that she started having an affair with her bodyguard called Barry Manneke. They were She was apparently very, very much in love with the fella. Then Barry Manneke dies in a strange motorcycle accident in which he was basically garroted across the road and pulled off his bike and killed. Now, the, um, it was said... And that, here's the headline, Daily Mail, Diana Bodyguard killed for our affair. Yeah. What um, the official story was, that it was an accident. Anyway, this is what Diana, uh, Christian Fitzgerald told me happened subsequently, sometime later. Diana came into her um, healing centre, just near Regent's Park in London, in an unconsolable state. She was sobbing. And it took some time to sit her down and calm her down and say, what's going on? Because as she was sobbing, Diana was shouting, they killed him, they killed him, they killed him. 
And what Diana then said is that uh, uh, earlier that day, hence the response, what she called Prince Charles's senior detective mm -hmm. had said to her, because by this time, it's sometime uh, uh, after the death of the bodyguard, she was having an affair with a man now out and accepted in, in, in the open with a guy called Captain James Hewitt. And she said that what had happened is the, the senior detective of Prince Charles had just said to her, that the affair with Hewitt had to end, and if it didn't, he could end up like Barry Manneke, which is the bodyguard that's supposed to have been an accident. He was telling her they killed her. He also said to her in the same conversation, and don't think that you're not expendable either. Um, and Diana told her the story whereby when, when, when she'd first heard about Manneke, Barry Manneke, was when she was with Charles in a, in a limo being driven to the steps of an airplane and outside were all the paparazzi. And just as they were about to get out, she said, uh, Charles leaned across and said, pity about your friend, wasn't it? And told her with a, 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 a smile on his face and an irony in his voice that Barry Manneke had just died. And so they killed the guy. I, I, mean, I mean, that's what happens. And at the same time, uh, this came out in, in, in the public arena as well, James Hewitt was being, he said in his own words, was being um, uh, warned by what he called a senior member of the royal family that... And tell folks who that is. Uh, James Hewitt, he was the, the, the guy who, uh, who had the, the, the affair later with, with Diana. And he said um, publicly, that a senior member of the royal family had contacted him and said the affair must end or in effect they can't be uh you know they can't say what the consequences would be and in, in other words he was being threatened in the same way the royal family the windsors are an evil intergenerational bloodline with human and non-human dna and hearts of frickin' stone. Hello, this is Hank Hill, and I'm telling you what, you need to listen to Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Infoworth.com. Yeah. <clears throat> My judge, <laughs> what is the secret of the universe? <laughs> Infoworth.com. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> It's the final segment with David Icke, but we'll have live streams tomorrow night at infowars.com forward slash Bilderberg and also at davidike.com. They're going to have live streams. If ours go down or have problems, uh, and if theirs have problems, you can go to our streams, but uh, davidike.com. Uh, David wants to speak before me at 5 o'clock. I speak at like 6, but I want him to go longer, so I'll speak at 6.30 or so. I'm just going for 30 minutes. Uh, they're at the Grove overlooking where the globalists are meeting. Believe me, they're very upset by this. They don't like it, but I drug him in here because I knew he was in the newsletter. He helped run davidike.com. Uh, Gareth Ike, uh, who is David Ike's son, I thought he had the premiere here on our radio show. Uh, buddy, what is it like having a dad like this? It's, it's interesting. <laughs> for, for one thing, oh, it's, not, it's not regular, but it's good. It's great because uh, it gives me the freedom to try and be myself as well. Well, you're an accomplished uh, a musician. Uh, you know, tell us about some of the work you're doing and your view on Bilderberg. Well, to be honest, I was a musician for a long time, and I was trying, like all young, oh, sorry, all young people do, is to try and break in, mic, break in, break into the industry yeah, and, and try and make it, um, whatever making it means. Um, and then I found out from the inside just how corrupt and just how bent the whole industry is, which kind of freaked me out a bit, to be honest, because obviously, you know, Dad's been talking about his stuff for a long time, but to actually see it, you know, I was offered a uh, hundred thousand pounds on my first album um, to take the album um, as an advance based on me changing my surname and saying basically I didn't agree with anything that dad had ever said. You know, I was offered it there on a plate and obviously told them to stick it up their ass, obviously. But um, but that kind of woke me up a bit. And now, you know, the, the music industry is, is so corrupt that all the musicians are, and, and it's the same at Bilderberg because there's lots of musicians around as well. They're... Um, there's some really, really top-notch musicians that are turning their back on the, on the establishment and, and on the music industry and, and doing it on their own. And um, <clears throat> I'm happy to be part of that. It's great. Make a noise. 
And give people your website. Um, yes, just garethike.com. Um, yeah, I'm normally talking rubbish on there, but it's all good fun. And there's loads of songs on there too. GarethIke.com. And in closing, I'm going to come back with all the news, folks, all the info uh, in the next 30 minutes I haven't gotten to yet. David, we're talking about how they try to intimidate us, and when we don't fear them, then they are pathetic. What is the key in closing in about three minutes to defeat these people? Well, if I could just say very quickly, Alex, this fella was at school when the ridicule of me was at its peak, and he went through a nightmare. Um, at school as a kid, being ridiculed day after day after day, and he's still sitting by my side. This is one hell of a bloke, I'll tell you, and he's a fantastic musician. Um, and but they're not laughing now. No, they're not laughing now. Well, the bloody media are laughing, but I mean, again, they're they're, they're know, laughing to themselves. Yeah. Well, you know, when they attack us, it's an endorsement. The thing is, they've got. You know, I feel for them, you know, bless them, because they've got to come to terms with the fact that they've been reporting the world in a completely inaccurate way all their careers and the people they've been ridiculing have been people that have been doing the job that they should have been doing but 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 aren't for me you know if you can get to watford tomorrow if you can get to the grove hotel and join us please come oh yeah and the police are trying to divert you away i'll tell you after david leaves but go ahead yeah it's very important to listen to what alex says um after after the break because um they're trying to do everything they can to stop people getting there and to make it as difficult as possible. Please, let's come in numbers, let's smile in their face, and let's do what is necessary to make a massive statement in numbers. Absolutely uh, looking across at the place where it's all going on. Please, make the effort. Wait, wait, what would your dad say? How about three generations? What would your dad say looking down on you right now? Well, my father was someone who was highly intelligent and a rebel, but of course didn't know anything of this was, was going on. Um, and, you know, I tell you what my father did, Alex. He said to me when I was a little kid, I never forgot it. He said, you're never finished in life until you sit down and say to yourself, I'm finished. Until you get to that point, no one can stop you. And I remembered that through the ridicule years, and I remember it now because, you know, this is a great weekend, and it's a great step forward, but my goodness, have we got some work to do in the years ahead. Massive. But that stuck with me and got me through so much. And this kid, I tell you, this fella, went through hell as a child because of the abuse of, of his father. And the fact that he's still going and, and, and so successful, I'm so proud of this boy, I can't tell you. And my other kids as well, Kerry and, uh, and Jamie. Hey, I gotta tell you, David Ike, it's great uh, meeting you in person after all these years. And we, we've missed each other a few times narrowly, but, but, but here we are now and tomorrow speaking outside the Grove. Everybody should be there. This is historic and uh, you're doing great work getting people to think outside the box. David Ike. Yeah, you too, mate. All right. Uh, great to meet you. We'll be right back after the break, folks. Stay with us. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. Mm -hmm.